Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Here we are in the Psychology of Eating podcast. I'm with Tanya today. Welcome, Tanya. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks. All right. So if you could wave your magic wand and get whatever you wanted in terms of relationship with food, body, health, what would that be for you? What would your wild wish be? Um, I think it would be connected to um, it's about my energy and it's about having recovered some mostly from having a very disordered eating pattern in the past. But I feel like the energy that went into that is a little bit still flailing around trying to find where to go and it keeps finding little areas to settle and live and then once that area kind of, I don't know, it cleans up and then it seems to move to another area. I mean, I, this is just kind of what I'm noticing because I seem to have this. It's a similar thing where I want to regulate it. I want to control it. If it's whether it's relationships or whether it's, um, you know, my finances or something like that, I just get in there and I want to like manipulate it and control it kind of the way I did with my body for so long, but it's like released from my body. And then I just feel like it's jumping into other areas. Does that make sense? I would love for that to resolve. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you think, so your past relationship with food. So a lot of things feel resolved there. What do you think resolved it for you? Ooh, it was help. It was a person who really helped me dive into. It kind of felt like she un- untangled what was going on with it, and really helped. Talking about it helped me see how much I was trying to manipulate my body instead of be with my body. I mm-hmm. thought I was taking care of my body. And that that's how you take care of things like you control them <laughs> yeah. and, and that's how you feel safe as you control it. Uh, so it kind of untangled the fact that I was a lot of things. The fact that I was taught to think my body is scary and it never works right. And there's always issues if you don't take the right vitamins or eat the right food. Uh, and it, it untangled um, some of the rigidity. It helped me loosen up. It helped me try new things and experiment and find out I didn't die and my body was still okay. And then I just kind of lost interest in controlling it. And I felt like I just want to be my body's friend instead. Mm -hmm. And so it was talking about it. It was really, I process a lot with words. I really didn't do a lot of body therapy or anything back then. I was really talking with someone untangling some of the knots in it. Yeah. So you, so, so it sounds like on one level, you just had a deeper understanding of yourself, deeper understanding of life, deeper understanding of what sort of really works for you and what actually doesn't. Right. So, and, and my, my husband kind of brought it up. He was kind of like, do you think that you could ever get help with, so you wouldn't be so rigid with food. He wanted me to relax around food so we could have more enjoyment together. So that's when I asked, because I I had been counseling on other things, but then I was like, let me ask for help specifically with this food piece and see what happens. How old were you when things started turning around for you in terms of food? And getting better? Yes. Um, uh, like mid thirties. So it was a while. And I'd been in that, that place for a long time. I mean, it was a good, you know, probably since I was like 14. Yeah. And just give me a sense with like a couple of headlines. What did that look like for you when you're in a more controlling relationship around food and body? Specifically, was it around diet, exercise? Um, how did yeah, that both. Yeah. What did it look like? Uh, yeah. A lot of rigid workouts, a lot of um, counting, whatever the diet thing was, if it was if I was counting carbs or if I was counting calories or whatever the new latest diet sugar, you know, I was counting everything and weighing everything and timing everything. And I would eat like perfect all week, Monday to Friday. And then I would have some treat days, cheat days, whatever, Saturday, Sunday, um, 
but those were kind of regimented too. And if I missed a workout or I ate something off the plan or someone invited us to dinner on a weeknight, it was like, I was just like, Ooh, it's just made me shake. It was not, didn't fit in, was hard to figure out how to make it work. And I felt guilty like forever. Yeah. So it looked like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So when things turned around for you with food, what were the other positive things you noticed in your life? And I'm, and I'm getting, you know, maybe some of those strategies have spilled into other areas and we're going to get to that. Um, but in your life, what changed for the better other than the food and body stuff? Like well, I, I relax, I could relax more. Um, with other than food and body, what changed? Let me think about that for a minute because yeah. it seemed like um, it seemed like I saw myself more. I got to, I felt like I was getting to know myself in a different kind of way, but I felt a little. Um, like I was like ungrounded or something a little, like, I'm not sure how to be this way. Like that, what holds me is discipline. So I felt a little confused about where to put the discipline, but I did enjoy not being as rigid. I noticed my body changed because I did like add a little bit of weight. I learned how to get comfortable with it. And then I just kind of, and then the weight kind of came back down. It was kind of floating around and I was like amazed that I, wasn't freaking out about it. I was just watching it and being curious about it, a little scared, but it was just different because I felt held uh, by someone I was talking to, a safe space that was always being provided for me. Um, and I, what else changed? I felt like I, I had a better connection like with people. It was less about the food and the rigidity and more about just um, flow, flowing with my kids and with my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. It's interesting because as you were explaining that to me, you really slow down and you really sort of dropped in with yourself mm-hmm. even more. Yeah. Things. Yeah. I started to feel like more than think <laughs> yeah. felt everything was all up in here and rigid and rules and structure. And it became less about that and more about uh, rhythm and what feels right. Yeah. You know, what feels good. I got a lot more body work. I remember I started getting a lot more massages and, you know, doing acupuncture and just getting curious about other ways to support myself. I remember I had a friend who says, you must like being touched because I would have like a massage every two weeks. And I had like this network chiropractor and I was like, yeah, I guess I do. I like touch. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know that before, but uh, I still have my workouts going. I still was doing the workouts. I don't think I had let go of that yet. Mm-hmm. That was still there. Maybe I, that was, yeah. A lot of my stuff kind of floated more into the workout realm mm-hmm. out of the control so uh, I was still on my workouts, but. Uh, but you dropped into your body. More. It was more, way more. That's when I started sensing that the workouts were too much. Actually, I was like, this is my body's not enjoying this as much. But it was hard to let go of that one. Mm-hmm. My body made me let go of that one. You know, I didn't I didn't work on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these days. Is there a main place right now that you find yourself bringing the old controlling self into a certain part of life? Like, what would that be? If my relationship my, with my husband. Mm-hmm. I like keep thinking I'm trying, I'm helping him, but yeah, he's fine. <laughs> he's like, he knows he can take care of himself. I mean, he knows how to he's on his own personal growth path or whatever he's he's doing his own pace with things and it's different than mine. And, but I keep trying to, you know, manage that. Yeah. What, what would, what's your wish for him? If you could wave your magic wand and grant him a wish that you would love for him to have. So you, so you wouldn't have to be doing all this controlling, but you just had one magic wish. 
What would um, that be? Yeah, that he would. Yeah, if I could wish for anything, it's that he would be more engaged with his body and be more present, mm-hmm. like in the moment. Um, so he could know himself better. I just wish he would know himself mm-hmm. better. Is he present for you? Sometimes it's hard. He has, you know, a lot of, he has like, you know, the labels, the ADHD and I'm not, he has a little bit of a sleep issue. Uh, so he doesn't sleep as good. Um, and he, he had a work accident, so he might've had a brain injury. We really haven't gotten that fully checked out, but he just had never been quite the same since. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I've thought if I wished anything, would I wish that he was like the way he was before? And it's like, no, cause even back then I wanted him to be more present. It's like, it's hard for him to be real um, present with people. There's a lot of distraction, a lot of sarcasm, a lot of, and he's funny. He's a funny guy and he's happy in, in a certain sort of way. But, um, and he's so on my side and so supportive. And yet there's this way that I don't feel him, that I would love to feel him. I would love to just feel like he's really here with me, present with me, all of him. Does he know that you want that? Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about it. He wishes he could be more present too. (laughs) So yeah, we've talked about it and we've got a ton of years behind us. So it's like, we're so not new at this, but yeah, it feels like we're going through a different phase. Yeah. Where I need to learn something too, you know, that I haven't figured out just how to, I, that's where I'm wondering if my energy is just, if I, if I unhook it from there, where's it going to, how do I, what do I do? Is this really a controlling thing or what is this? You know, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know, to me, what it sounds like at the deepest cut is that you want a deeper sense of connection with the person who you love, like period. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is true. I think it's good to, in a way, hold your cards there for a moment and just, just, just acknowledge that that's such a beautiful desire. That desire may show up sometimes as you feeling like you want to control it. But really, what that desire is, it's a natural desire. So it's a natural desire. It's not unnatural. It's not uncalled for. <laughs> it's yeah. completely legitimate and it's wonderful and it's sweet and it's beautiful. It's reminding me of what I wanted with my body too. It's why I just really wanted a deeper connection back then with my body too. Yes. And I thought I was finding it, you know, with the control and I realized, oh, I'm not. Yeah. And then I found it when I shifted, you know? So, yeah. He is like the old you. Right, right. He's got a little bit, just a little bit of the old you, Mm -hmm. meaning, you know, you were doing stuff, but you were more here. Right. And even though your body was under a lot of control, you really weren't intimate with it like you are now. Right. Fully. Yeah, because he does a lot of stuff. And yet, wow, yeah, that's a lot like that. Hmm. Right, and and it's and there and there's no blame. There's no anything. I'm I'm just making the observation. He's like what you used to be. Yeah. With your body, and now you're such in a different place with food and body, and therefore. I'm like, hurry up, come on, catch up already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, that's perfectly, just so you know, it's a perfectly legitimate desire because you reached a certain place on the mountain. Right. And it's, an, and it, and it, and it's nice up there. It's a good view. Yeah. It's pretty. It's sweet. It's comfy. And like, come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but he's like at base camp, you know, and he's like happy there right now. You know, he's got everything yeah. he needs. <laughs> he's taking yeah. care of himself, you know. He's got a different view. Part of it, you know, Tanya, part of it, I think, as you're moving forward with this and, and you know, this isn't easy. I, I think what you're presenting isn't easy, meaning I've heard this story so many times. I've been personally in this story in relationship yeah. where I'm either wanting the person like hurry up and evolve and I've yeah. probably been in a relationship or two where they were, they were thinking, yeah. <laughs> hey, you hurry up and evolve. Right. So I've probably been on the <sighs> other side of that. And it's just a difficult place to be because I think you mentioned something to the effect of we're, we're all, you know, moving at our own pace. Right. So my, so then a question bubbles up because my when I did learn to have like that better relationship with my body, like just more dropping into it and allowing it to be whatever it was, it wasn't always healthy. I mean, I went through a health crisis. I managed to get more, even more into my body. So I'm wondering if that could play out here, you know, where if my body wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, I still managed to stay in relationship with it. I still managed to accept what it was going through and kind of learn from it and uh, let it, you know, be part like my guru in a way. So how do you do that in relationship? You know, it's like, does that fit or work? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just, I find myself curious. Like how could I just let what is be and is, does it mean like a lot of grief for me? Like, do I need to grieve, you know, that he's different, that he's not caught up? I mean, I wouldn't be on top of the mountain grieving that he's down there. I would just be like, I'm here and yay. <laughs> you know, it's like right. when he gets here, he gets here. You know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm sensing that, that, that there's a certain part of you that does perhaps need to feel just the simple pain of, you don't have what you want right now. Right. Right. You don't have it but that's right terrible. Now. Like in the past, if in, uh, the way I was raised, like that's just not okay. Like that was yeah. like the way I saw that play out with my mom and dad was if she's not happy, like she's always on him. So. Yes. And that's one strategy. And, and it doesn't. I don't want to do that. No. I think first or let's say next step I would love for you to consider spending some time and it, you know, think like a couple of months and just take the foot off the gas pedal called, come on, honey, catch up. <laughs> just, just, just take it off. You can, you can put it back on eventually. Yeah. And I'm not saying you shouldn't put it back on eventually, yeah. but it, it, it seems like there's a part of you that needs to get caught up to you that there's a place where this hurts a little bit. Yeah. I kind of want to avoid that and just go to him being caught up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because then if you do something and you control things and you give him the right book or the right workshop or the right understanding podcast or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you won't have to feel like crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to skip that part, but not really. Cause it's like, it's me. And it wants to be that part of me wants to be seen too. Yes. I don't, I, I wonder Tanya, if he's seen the part of you that feels in pain because he can't fully be present for you. He knows, it, it sounds like he knows intellectually what you want. Right. I don't know if he feels the cost for you of not having what you want, if he feels it. And the only way he can possibly feel it at the very least is if you're feeling it. I have to feel it. 
Yeah, wow. So then the next thing that comes to mind is like, uh, or my body, it's like, am I safe to feel that around him? Doesn't that make him more sad? I, I just, how do I make that safe, you know, to feel that around him? And I mean, not all the time. I don't always feel like that. But if it's there, like, how do I make that feeling feel like it's okay to show up? I think I'm judging it. I'm judging it. Like, that's not nice to feel that way in front of him. Like, he doesn't want that. And so instead, I just tell him what I need him to do or what I, you know, what I'm wishing him that he would do. But that's I feel controlling. Yeah. And he's 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 not going to hear at this point anything more about doing no he wants he's stubborn anyways he's not gonna, he's gonna do what he, he's that's he's good at that <laughs> so yeah. i think step one is yeah before you figure out how to be safe around him, okay feeling okay. that just feel safe Please. with you in the comfort of your own home when you're alone when you're yeah. outside by yourself when right. you're taking a walk on the beach, right? Just feel right. it. Just just take safe moments where it's just you and you, or you and a close friend, maybe that you talk to about these things. But at the least, for you to really feel safe, acknowledging this kind of sucks. This hurts. Yeah, yeah. It hurts when he's distracted and I'm needing connection. It yeah. hurts when I'm not feeling the love, even though I know he loves me, but I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, that's the part. I know it and I want to feel it. Yeah, okay. And it hurts. Yeah. I feel sad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I am already feeling like that's hasn't found like a safe space inside of me yet. I know how I know how to help that feel safe, but I haven't really backed off enough to just breathe into that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I went through a lot, you know, with my health crisis and I thought on this side, I really felt like I did get like to an Everest view or something like I'm on the top of Everest and I want to be there like with him. So it's like, okay, you know, I'm here by myself right now. And, uh, uh, it's amazing. And it's like, shoot, man, he didn't, he didn't, you know, make it up to this level yet, you know? So it's like, I'm loving the view, but I wanted to be with him, but that's messing up my view too. I, but it's like, I got to kind of be with a little bit of the disappointment. It's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It can, yeah. It can all be there. The beautiful view and the, Oh, <laughs> the sad. Mm. Oh, it can hmm. all be there. And, and it really starts with you. And it really starts with not trying to figure him out for mm. a little while. I like that. Just take a take a little vacation from figuring him out, figuring out how to do it, trying to think your way out of this, trying to solve nice. it, trying to control it. And for a couple of months, it's just dedicated to kind of how you're feeling about it all and yeah. giving yourself space and, and just kind of watching what shows up in that space. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Just what shows up there. Cause there, I haven't, yeah. I haven't sat there to wonder, you know, to think about it, but yeah, just allowing it to be there. And, hmm. and if you're home, at some point and he's noticing, you know, honey, you're not your usual chipper self. W w what's happening? You know, yeah, you're right. I'm not, I've, I've just been, you know, I've been allowing myself to feel some sadness. What are you yeah. sad about? Um, you know, I've just been reflecting on where I'm at and reflecting on where you're at and mm -hmm. just, just really getting in touch with the part of me that's just needing you to be different or wanting you to be different yeah, and wanting to have a certain kind of connection that we don't have and not trying to force you to do anything, honey. I'm just, I'm just pulling back a little bit and just feeling 
my own feelings around it. And it just, it hurts. That's all. And I'm, I still love mm. you. Yeah. Not going anywhere. I just been, I'm just kind of just feeling it and maybe look at my wounds a little bit. However you communicate, right. but take little moments or risks when they present themselves. Right. To yeah. be honest. And you're not asking him to do anything. Honey, you, I'm, I'm not, I'm literally not asking you to do anything right now. It's no different than if I, you know, sprain my ankle and I'm sitting down and just feeling the pain of it. Right. I like telling him that he, he doesn't have to do anything because he will try to f fix things. I mean, he, he wants to help. And that's so I could see see me saying those things and him wondering what he can do. But I, I like that I would already tell him. There's nothing you really need to do. I just am allowing myself the space to feel what I feel. Yeah. yeah. I feel sad. I feel. Yeah. He, but I can wait for him to ask. I like that. You know, if he notices. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if he doesn't notice, that's just more permission for you to be with yourself. Right. Right. Oh, wow. That's an interesting thought. If he doesn't notice, it's more permission for me to be with myself. Yeah. As opposed to try to fix things, fix him, fix you. Right. Control this. It, it doesn't feel good. And it's, that's just where it's at. Right. Right. Huh. Yeah. I'm totally having my body's really doing something. Cause it's like, yeah, remember I felt that way. Like I didn't want you to control me anymore. And it's like, I wanted you to just feel your feelings. And it's like, yeah, okay. I'm getting these messages from inside that it's just my body kind of wanted to feel like it didn't have to do anything either. Yes. Like just feel your feelings. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, I stopped putting like these, you have to be a certain way on my body. So, yes, I do see that. I could do the same thing here. Do the same thing with the relationship and with your husband for right now. Yeah, I like the right two now. months. I like the two months. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's a good, that's good because isn't this the middle of February? So middle of March is our, uh, I mean, middle of April is our um, anniversary anyway. So that'll be, that's perfect. Yeah. So I'll do this till yeah. Our anniversary. Nice. Oh, so there's a little bit of like, Hmm, I wonder how that I, yeah, I just have a lot of wonder now. It's like, I wonder how that'll feel, what'll show up. Me too. Yeah. And we don't know. We, I don't know either. We really don't know what's going to show up for you, but it is worth wondering about because it's a whole different way for you to be with this relationship dynamic. It's a different right. way for you to be with yourself. And, and ultimately, you know, what you're wanting from him, you're making sure that you're giving to yourself first. Right. You're, you're wanting him to be present. more emotionally available. Yeah. And you're wanting him to be more present. You're wanting him to track you better and track your emotions. And, oh, honey, wow, you need this right now. And you need that right now. And he's not there in this moment. So let's see if you can give that to you. <sighs> Instead of being like hyper vigilant, looking at where it's not, <laughs> I can like bring it to myself. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is very different. Yeah. In this area anyways, in this one area, that's very, yeah, I haven't tried that yet. Not like fully committed to it anyways, you know, this is yeah, different. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, back to the very beginning of the conversation, when I asked you if you can wave your magic wand and get whatever you want, you mentioned how, you know, previously here was my relationship with food and body. It was kind of controlling. Yeah. And now I find myself doing that in other areas. So what I want to say is I want to put a different story around that. I want to say that this is a story about you evolving mm. and you maturing 
because yes, you used to do that with food and body, because guess what? That's the easiest place for a person to control. That's why nine-year-olds do it and 13-year-old girls do it and 16-year-olds do it because you can, if you choose, try to control your diet and control your exercise and therefore control your body. Yeah. And it's a way for us to then feel, I have some power. I have some say in this world. In the beginning, it felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you graduated from that. Mm. And now you're noticing, wow, I have, I have desires. I have dreams. I have hopes. I have these beautiful things that I want in my life. And one of them is a certain kind of connection with my life partner. Yeah. So that's wonderful that that's what you're turning your attention to now. So I'm not looking at that as, oh my God, now Tanya's being all controlling and such. I'm thinking, no, you are putting your attention in a good place. Hmm. I'd much rather you put it into your relationship than into just like trying to lose two pounds from here or three ounces from there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's not happening. Right. Right. So you're starting to put your energy or you have been putting your energy in a place where it belongs, you know, developing yourself. You've been developing your career. You've been, you've been doing so much for yourself. Yeah. And now when that energy starts to go to other places, Oh, you know, where do I need to evolve my life? Sure. It's going to go to your relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, yeah, you, yeah. And, and, and then you might go to some old habits at first. Yes. I was thinking some defaults. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's nothing. It's really nothing. It's just a smoke screen because uh-huh. 99% of what's there is you just being a loving human. You're yeah. just a loving human and a loving partner. I mean, it, it, would, it would suck if you didn't want to be close and you didn't give a shit and you didn't yeah. care. <laughs> True. (laughs) True. Yeah. So it's just a desire for like a deeper connection. I'm like, I'm reframing it as instead of like, Oh, I'm trying to manipulate and control everything. It's just, I'm trying to find a way to find power here. So maybe some old habits showed up, but it doesn't like, I don't need to give those that a ton of power. None, none, None. like less than 1%. I used to play piano a lot, you know, I haven't played it recently, but I mean, if you make one mistake in the song, you just keep playing, you know, I'm just like, isn't that kind of like an old habit showing up? It's just like a, you hit the wrong key, you know, whatever. You just keep playing the song. It still sounds like the song. (laughs) I love that analogy. I love that. Yeah. It's like, I don't have to get stuck on, Oh, I hit the wrong key. Yeah. So, Oh, a bad habit showed up, but it's like, Oh, just keep playing the song. It's like, I'm still, there's still a lot of beautiful things in the song, you know? Yeah. To me, hmm. this is this is also you grounding yourself more or evolving yourself more in your own evolution into the feminine and what that yes. means for you. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the structure and, and rigidity was felt more like a masculine side of me anyways. And yeah. I'd like to kind of go more with just whatever flows in and out, you know, just this is just in some kind of phase in our relationship that we're in right now. So yeah. What does this flow call for? Yeah. And it seems like, or at least what I'm suggesting that perhaps it's calling for you to just go within a little more and I agree. heal yourself, nurture yourself and give yourself permission to feel what you're feeling. And, and I, I really want you to not forget that all this is coming from, even if sadness comes up or disappointment comes up mm-hmm. or grief comes up, underneath that is your desire for love and connection. Yeah. That's right. why this stuff is coming up. Yeah. Because you have a deeper desire for love and connection and is not being met and it hurts. Yeah. But let's acknowledge that there's a deeper desire here that's 
where the real action is. Because I, I, in my experience, when we feel the deeper desire beneath the conflict, so the conflict is, I need this, he ain't doing it. That's right. a conflict. And, but the deeper desire under that is, I just want to feel love and connection with the person that I have chosen to feel love and connection with. Right. And sometimes we just need to bask in that deeper feeling a little bit more. It, it sort of has a way of regenerating us. Mm. Yeah, because the desire is more, the desire is just healthy and beautiful. And like, it feels like nourishing somehow just to have that, to know that that's what's underneath it. It's like, that's the root. Well, like that's beautiful. And it's like, yeah, some things up here you might, be hurting a little bit, but underneath that to me, is like something that I could connect more with than just like what's hurting, you know, like if the reason it bothers me at times is because of what I really desire. Bingo. Yeah. And I can, I can get that within myself and just kind of not really, I don't need to stop desiring it, but I can stop the, like two months off of the habit of thinking I need to change anything outside it for him more just being with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whatever it is I'm feeling in the moment when those things come up. Yes. Yeah. That's a different kind of relationship with me inside my relationship. <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense? It kind of lets yeah. the relationship yeah. be its own thing. But then instead of me tending to the relationship, I'm actually tending to me in the relationship. Yes. Because <laughs> I will actually leave me and tend to the relationship and tend to Dan. And it's like, wait, let me tend more to me here and what I'm feeling first and be present to that first. And yeah, interesting. interesting. Yeah, and, and you're giving yourself what you're wanting from him right now. Mm hmm Yeah. And I think you're giving yourself what you're needing to give yourself. Yeah. And I, I can feel like I'm like I'm looking forward to experimenting with that because in the past, like when I felt sad about certain things, I would like go down the rabbit hole or what it wasn't like connected to what I really desired or wanted. I didn't know. I just felt sad. Things weren't like I wanted it. I went too deep. So there's a little bit of me thinking, I don't want to go too deep into like some rabbit hole of sadness, but I was like, no, see, I'm connecting it to, this is different than before. Like it's, uh, I'm going to be more connected to the, like the life inside of me that I have and that I like envision and you know, most of me is having that. And it's like, I don't feel as much liveliness coming from Dan, but when, when I'm in those moments, I have a lot of other connections that are super lively that, that fill my need. And then inside of me is a lot of liveliness. If I could stay present to that and just whatever feelings come up about the fact that he's not always matching me there. Yeah, that's it's helping with the fear that I'll go down some rabbit hole of <laughs> sadness. Yeah. Yes. But that's where see, okay. Yeah. So there's 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 a teeny little bit of like thinking, can I really feel the sad and not control it and like not think I have to pull myself out of it because it's too, it's too much. So there's a place where I just need to trust that it's okay to feel however big the sad is for, for a moment. It's just like when waves get big, like they roll out. It's not like it's going to overwhelm me. Such a good analogy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is, this is you to me, when I'm hearing you say, I'm, I'm putting other words on it. You're learning to trust the woman inside you and the woman yeah. inside you feels deeply. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't really seen like that a lot. Like I wasn't, wasn't conditioned like by a role model of seeing anybody really do that and have it be okay. So I feel like I'm kind of blazing a trail. I haven't really, you know, seen in my family anyways. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's new territory for you. Yeah. 
So, so it makes sense. It would be scary. And it makes sense that you'd say like, Oh God, you know, if I go there, I'm not coming back. It's going to yeah. be a <laughs> rabbit hole. How deep. Of like yeah. Terribleness. Yeah. 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 And it's not that it's not that it's, I, I think you're going to find yourself more and you're going to yeah. find a beautiful place in yourself. And, and it's, and it's the place in a strange way that you're wanting to get with your partner, which is a deeper level of intimacy and a deeper level of contact. Right. And a deeper level of emotional closeness. And, you know, I, I, Tanya, sometimes in life, we get that from the other person. Yeah. And we get those circumstances where you're just getting loved up. Yeah. in a way that you've never loved yourself before. And that's really cool when it happens. Yeah, like when and, the stars align, you know. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes life is doing something different and life is saying, okay, sorry, but you're going to have to do this little piece first with yourself. Right. This feels like one of those times. Yeah. Feels vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. But I can, I can do that. I can totally do that. I just felt like I haven't seen it that clearly before. Like I see, I guess I have more clarity right now about it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a um, friend or friends that you can talk to about this sort of thing that we're talking about and sort of get support and encouragement? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that'll be important in the next couple of months to, you right. know, let the, let the people closest to, you know, like, Hey, this is, this is what I want to be doing. This is, a, this is, this is the kind of work I want to be doing with myself in the next few months. Right. And here's what that's going to look like and allowing myself to feel what I'm feeling. If there's sad or grief or disappointment and allowing myself to feel the desire beneath that, which is, God, I really want this beautiful thing. And, right. you know, it hurts that I don't have it. And, and, and that's a, in a way that's enough to just be able to say to oneself, yeah, I have this beautiful thing that I want and I don't have it. Ouchies. Right. And then just to have that witnessed. Up. Yeah. Just to be with myself or have it witnessed by like, I don't need anybody to fix anything. Yeah. 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 I'm already thinking of two or three friends that are, are totally safe to talk to about that and just would hold space for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It feels something about it. It feels uh, like a surrender, you know, to surrender to what is like, just allow it, not, not like giving up, but just like, you know, allowing. Yes. It kind of, it feels more ease, like, oh, there's really nothing to do. Because I really keep thinking, you know, there's something I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. So now. Yeah, you know, this is, this is letting, let the ocean teach you on this one. You know, mm. just the waves are going to yeah. come in and out. Yeah. And there's no struggle. You know, just no. let the waves do what they do. You can't control them. No. Yeah. You can surf them and swim in them and, you know, <laughs> just like hang out, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's a lot of power. Sometimes it's quiet. Yeah. How you it doing feels like a nice time? break. It feels good. It feels like I feel like more breath in my body and like a break. Like I've giving myself a permission and you're giving me permission, you know, to just take a break for a while, a couple months off of, of trying to do anything other than just feel what is alive in the moment whenever there isn't that connection. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to just be with whatever is in the moment. Yeah. There's nothing I have to do. Just be with it. Yeah. It feels so simple and yet so pro like big somehow, you know, like yes. it's going to be a big shift for me. 
Yeah. Simple in concept for sure. Absolutely yeah. simple in concept. Difficult in yeah. practice oftentimes. Yes. But think of it as a practice. Just, yeah. just I'm going to practice this every day. I love that. I'm not always going to be great at it. And I might right. get tempted to say, honey, I need you to do this or that or the other thing. Yeah. And do your best to let that go and just really just this is about you and you and your husband will do his thing. Right. Right. He'll be fine. And yeah. again, I, I want to suggest if he notices or ask questions, be honest with him in a way that he can hear it. So it's like about my experience and like own what's what's going on for me. Exactly. Yeah. And that he doesn't have to do anything <laughs> to, to fix yeah, it. Right. Yeah. I want to make sure I put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to fix this. Right. I've just decided that I just need to be in a mode for a while where I'm just feeling myself and feeling where I'm at and just feeling. Yeah. Without trying to change me, without trying to change you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes it'll feel like I'm feeling like on top of like just uh, you know, on a high and I'll feel like super excited because I had like a really great day or something. Cause I do, I have a lot of life in me, a lot of energy and I'll have really amazing days and he's kind of in a funk. And if he doesn't match me, then that'll kind of, that's where I get a little bit of the sad, but I want to realize it's like, I could feel the sad, but it doesn't have to like totally take away my joy. I want to, I want to be able to allow myself to have both things, you know? Yes. Like he doesn't have to match the joy either. Yes. Like where it's okay to for him to be different. Yeah. What you're describing to me is called wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> really? Of 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 your years of being on the planet. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't have to have everybody around us feeling the same thing we're feeling. Right. And it's possible for you to be celebrating your life while embracing the fact that he might not be in a good mood. Right. Yeah. And not having to fix him or change him and just, right. Honey, I love you. Big hug. Yeah. And then I'm still him. celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of just giving me more permission to be whatever it is I'm feeling in the moment. That's what I like. Sometimes I'll, I'll, yeah, I will shift my mood depending on his. So even that's more permission to be with what I'm feeling in the moment. Cause uh, that I'm present for me. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's different. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Thank that's you. A great piece of work. I think that you did today. Yeah. Right. Yes. I love that. Taking two months off that. I, I don't know. I just, that's, th that's making me excited. You know, like I have a little, like, it's like a project I'm working on, you know, even if it's kind of like just dropping into it, I just like that. My brain, that makes my brain happy. <laughs> my body feels some ease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. It's really, really good work. And to me, it's just a testament to all the good work you've been doing on yourself. Thanks for reframing it, you know? Yeah. It's like, it just feels like a desire, you know, to have that connection instead of trying to control. So, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, this is helpful. It's like enhancing the work I've already done. So, um, yeah, thank you. This is great. You feel complete? I do. All right. Yeah. Well, I so appreciate our time together and everybody listening in. Thank you for tuning in. Always more to come, my friends. Take care, everybody. Take care, Tanya. Thank you. Hey, friends. We're so happy that you've joined us for another episode of The Psychology of Eating with Mark David. Are you loving these episodes? Then simply subscribe and you'll never miss an episode again. We'd also love it if you'd leave us a comment below so we can hear more about your own journey with food and body. 
And if you're curious about what we offer at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, including our internationally acclaimed coach certification training that's rooted in dynamic eating psychology and mind-body nutrition, please head on over to our website, psychologyofeating.com. Until next time, take care. And remember, having the body you want starts with loving the body you have.